For years, Russia has violated the terms of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty without remorse. To this day, Russia remains in material breach of its treaty obligations not to produce, pos possess, or flight test a ground-launched intermediate range cruise missile system with a range between 500 and 5,500 kilometers. In spite of this violation, for almost six years, the United States has gone to tremendous lengths to preserve this agreement and it's just ensure security for our people, our allies, and our partners. We have raised Russia's non-compliance with Russian officials, including at the highest levels of government, more than 30 times. Yet Russia continues to deny that its missile system is non-compliant and violates the treaty. Russia's violation puts millions of Europeans and Americans at greater risk. It aims to put the United States at a military disadvantage and it undercuts the chances of moving our bilateral relationship in a better direction. It's our duty to respond appropriately. When an agreement is so brazenly disregarded and our security is so openly threatened, we must respond. We did that last December, when the United States, with strong support from all of our NATO allies, formally declared Russia in material breach of the treaty. I also then provided notice that unless Russia returned to full and verifiable compliance within 60 days, we would suspend our obligation un under that treaty. We provided Russia an ample window of time to mend its ways and for Russia to honor its commitment. Tomorrow that time runs out. Russia has refused to take any steps to return real and verifiable compliance over these 60 days. The United States will therefore suspend its obligations under the INF Treaty, effective February 2nd. Uh, the Russians have been accused uh, by President Trump, by the United States, uh, for breaching uh, this agreement. Uh, what have they done wrong? Uh, well, Russia has been uh, basically uh, adopting uh, the cruise missiles it has developed for uh, ships and uh, submarines to be launched from land launchers. Uh, from a modified Iskander launcher, which basically, to begin with, uh, was capable of uh, using as ballistic uh, and cruise missiles. That makes a lot of uh, military and economic sense, because deploying the same, more or less, cruise, long-range cruise missile on a, a land launcher, or basically a truck, uh, it's t 10 to 20 times cheaper than on building a frigate and deploying on a frigate. Right. And trucks are actually easier to hide. So I think you've characterized it very well. Uh, Russia is at fault uh, initially for testing a ground-launched cruise missile that exceeded the INF limits of the, at the lower end. It was over 500 kilometers. I think Pavel explained uh, well the differences among the systems. And the United States has been trying for five years to uh, persuade Russia to come back into compliance.
After revealing he had personally organized the seizure of the peninsula, a journalist asked if he'd been ready to bring the country's nuclear forces to combat readiness. We were ready to do so, replied Putin. Да, для человечества это будет глобальная катастрофа. Для мира будет глобальная, глобальная катастрофа. Но я все-таки как гражданин России и, и глава российского государства, тогда хочу задаться вопросом, а зачем нам такой мир, если там не будет России? Тогда агрессор, он все равно должен знать, что возмездие неизбежно, что он будет уничтожен. И, ну, что, а мы жертвы агрессии. И мы как мученики попадем в рай, а они просто сдохнут. Потому что они, потому что они даже раскаяться не успеют. The Americans say is that these uh, missiles were tested for, a, for a, a range of over 500 kilometers, which they should not. Russia says that it did test for more than 500 kilometers, but that was for naval missiles, not for land-based. But for land-based, we, yes, we say we have them, but they are for a, a shorter range. But the problem with cruise missiles is that their range depends on how much fuel you have on board, and that's very hard to verify. Now, Russia has revealed details of a missile in a bid to dispel U.S. claims that it breaches a Cold War-era arms control pact. The military insists that its new rocket conforms to rules of the 1987 treaty. The move is the latest attempt by Moscow to disprove an allegation it denies and stop Washington quitting the treaty. Well, our correspondent in Moscow, Galina Polonskaya, was at the briefing and sent us this report. This is the cruise missile system SSC-89M729, which led to their decision to withdraw from the INF Treaty of 1987, signed by Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. The U.S. calls this a direct threat to Europe and Asia and says it has a range of 500 to 1,500 kilometers violating this treaty. That is designed to prevent attacks at short notice. In what the Russian Defense Ministry flaunts as a gesture of voluntary transparency, they decided to show this system to the world in a public revealing where journalists and foreign military attaches were invited to take a close look. During the briefing, the Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rybkov said that the accusations by the U.S. were groundless and said that Russia doesn't intend to destroy this system in order to save the treaty because it does not violate it. Then the Chief of Artillery and Missile Troops of the Russian Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Mikhail Matveyevsky, explained that it was just an upgraded version of a short-range missile system 9M72 8, which was placed nearby, claiming that its maximum range does not exceed 500 kilometers. In mid-October, U.S. President Donald Trump said that Washington would pull out of the INF Treaty because Russia had allegedly violated it. U.S. disarmament ambassador Robert Wood called on Russia to destroy all such missiles, launches and associated equipment in order to save the INF Treaty, but Russia says that the ultimatums will not work.